Hey everybody, as I'm sure most of you are aware by now, we have an updated app for the XR mixers to work on iOS 16. However, there are bugs that came along with this update. Number one on the list is there's a connection problem that people are having with their iPads, specifically if they are trying to connect to the built-in router. I will say the problem does not seem to exist for anybody who's uh, connecting to an external router or are hardwiring to their mixer. I've heard from the community that the firmware update that was released by Behringer in late June has solved the connection issue for some people and has not for others. So we're gonna do that firmware update to see if it solves the problem for me because I'm definitely seeing that issue. I don't think it's gonna work, but we're gonna investigate it together anyway. But more importantly, I'm gonna show you how to do the firmware update. I'm gonna walk you through it regardless of your reason for needing to do it. Um, maybe it's to solve this problem. Maybe it's just because you want to do the firmware update. Anyway, I'm going to show you where to get the file and I'm going to show you how to do the update using your desktop software. So you need to have the Xair Edit software downloaded either for Mac, Windows or Linux, whatever your operating system is. And then we're going to have a look at the bug and we're going to have a look at the firmware update. And we're going to do that right now. Let's go. If you've downloaded the updated app and you're trying to run it with your iOS 16 iPad, connecting specifically to the built-in Wi-Fi on the device, this is probably what you're seeing. If I try to launch, there's my uh, mixer, but then it disappears. It may come back, it may not. But if I restart the app and I quickly choose my mixer, it'll connect, but then the minute you try to do anything, you start getting um, a rotating connection loss symbol. It'll show up for a second, it'll disappear like it's connected again, then it'll disconnect. And you know, your mileage may vary. It may last a second, it may last a little longer, who knows? But at least what I'm seeing is that I can leave it in this state where it's constantly disconnecting, reconnecting, disconnecting, and it'll do this for a few minutes until it just crashes completely. I'm gonna actually leave this running on my iPad just so we see what happens this time around. Okay, so what we're gonna do is set ourselves up to be able to, um, to do this firmware update. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my mixer from access point over to a wired connection, and I'm gonna use my computer to do a firmware update. So I'm gonna open the software, and then I'm gonna flip the switch on the front, and uh, once it catches the network, we'll see my software connect. Any minute now, there we go. And if we look in the setup, we can see that my current firmware version is 1.18. So let's just put this away for a second. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to go download what we need. So you can see I've already got it queued up here. But what you need to do is you need to go to Behringer.com, click on Downloads. You're going to choose uh, Mixers from the Product Group. Then you're going to choose Digital Stage Box Mixers. And I have an XR16, but obviously you choose the one that you have, choose software, and then click on firmware. And so here we have the latest firmware version, which was released on June 29th of this year, and it's version 1.2. Download it, download it to somewhere where you know where you know to find it without having to look too hard. I'm gonna save mine to the desktop just because. And uh, if we look, I've already got it there. And then what you're going to do is open up this folder and you are going to extract all. I'm not going to do it because I already have, but it should extract it to the same place. And in this case, that will be my desktop. So now we can go into my extracted folder here. And you'll see that we have um, a PDF about this update and then the update file. So let's have a look at the PDF just because you always should, just to make sure there's nothing weird. Uh, the Xair Series Firmware 1.2 update offers several functional improvements and bug fixes as listed below. It specifically supports more recent hardware versions of Behringer XR Series mixers with alternative chipsets. Please use minimum Xair Edit version 1.8 for control and applying firmware updates, especially if you purchased your mixer recently. So that's pretty important. Let's go back to mine 
uh, my XR Edit and just make sure we are running the right version. So we have 1.7 and it's telling us we need 1.8 for control. So why don't we do that before we get into actually updating the software? So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to stay on software, but I'm going to click on Windows because that's what I'm using. You can do Mac and Linux if you need to. Uh, there's 1.8 for PC, so let's download 1.8. And again, I'm going to save this on my desktop just because I'll move it later. Let's open that folder. Same thing, we're going to extract all. It brings us a folder with the new software in it and I open the new software and it connects right away and look version 1.8 hardware version 1 okay so we are ready to update from this standpoint let's just have another look and see what else that is saying added support for v2 mixers with alternative MCU FPGA USB Wi-Fi module XR18 version 2, MR18 version 2, X18 version 2, added support for mixers with alternative Wi-Fi module, XR12W, 16W, MR12W, refer to the appendix for an overview of applicable firmware files for every product. Okay, version 1 hardware, Wi-Fi connection dropping under heavy network traffic fixed. So, I wouldn't say I was having heavy network traffic. Um, I was literally connecting... Uh, device to device using the built-in Wi-Fi, so that doesn't count. Version 2 hardware, DHCP issue um, with MBA M1 fixed, so that's MacBook Air M1 fixed. Wi-Fi access point disabled when switching to LAN mode. Sporadic Ethernet startup issues when switching between modes fixed. Separate firmware file for X18 V2. So none of that really applies to me other than the V1 hardware. Again, no heavy traffic, but we'll see what happens. Applying for more updates to XR series mixers. We have recently introduced alternative chipsets to our mixer production in order to prevent component shortages and for keeping up with supply. This requires new firmware code that is no longer compatible with older hardware. In order to keep all X Air mixers performance and features absolutely consistent, no matter if it's the original or the new hardware, starting with firmware version 1.2, we will provide two update files in every release package. XR18 hardware version, uh, hardware version one firmware 1.2 update, XR18 hardware version two, 1.2 update. So it looks like it's the same update, um, this one, starting with this one for, uh, for the same device. XR Edit 1.8 will be used as usual for any firmware update. It indicates the hardware version it is connected to, making it easy for you to choose the correct update file. So that's why we were getting a readout here of hardware version 1, so that you know what you're looking for. It will also indicate if you're trying to apply the wrong update file. Very handy. So here's a little uh, applicable firmware file list for us. Um, I am doing XR16, Behringer XR12 firmware release 1.2, 2023, 623 says yes for me. Um, I believe that's what we have. It's gonna tell us if we have the wrong one anyway, isn't it? And that's it for this. So let's actually go into the mixer and let's do update firmware. Now we have to direct it to where our file is. So that's on my desktop and that is in Oops, my, uh, sorry, I'm on the wrong desktop. Desktop, Behringer XR12, XR16 firmware on one, version 1.2. So we have the correct one. And if you go into the folder, it should be visible and it should be the only thing visible because it's an update file and that's what the software is looking for. Double click it, you'll see the firmware is update. It's programming. And then the device will reboot. So as soon as it's rebooted, we should see it connect again automatically. So we just have to sit and be patient. And there we go, it's rebooted and we are back in. Let's have a look at our setup window. So current firmware version 1.2, hardware version one. So the moment of truth, I'm going to switch it back to access point and we're gonna see what happens when I try to connect with my, um, with my iPad and I should have mentioned that I am running um, 
iOS 16.6, not 16.5. So let's uh, let's switch that back and see what happens. Okay, switched it to access point. We're gonna lose access on the computer. I'm gonna bring my iPad back up. Let's turn on screen recording again. And okay. Let's go into our settings. Let's look for the Wi-Fi of our mixer. There's mine. Wait for it to connect. Once we got the check mark, we can go out of this window. And it's taking a while. It's taking its sweet time, as a matter of fact. Um, could have been that the... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, could have just been a little slow because it was still technically flipping over to access point mode. So now that I've got the correct network chosen, let's jump back into our Xair app and I'm still seeing the same problem. It's still disappearing. If I close it and open it again and I don't even get the mixer, there it is. Oh, it disappeared too quick for me. Try it one more time. I, I don't have a good feeling about this. And I'm going to click on it right away. So I'm in and let's just see connection lost. So I am one of those people who is not seeing a solution by updating the firmware. I still have this problem. Uh, let's make sure that I actually have the latest version of the Xair app. Go into the app store. Let's do X Air search, and there's X Air, and I have the most recent recent version. So uh, this has not solved the problem. There we go. Lesson learned. Um, what does this tell us? Um, it tells us that you still can't rely on the iPad app for this mixer, which is brutal that I'm saying this in August, on August the 11th, when this has been going on basically the entire year. Um, and, you know, we thought we were getting something wonderful when they released an update secretly. Um, and it was great that it connected a little bit, um, but it doesn't help if you actually want to use the mixer the way it's intended to be used with its built-in Wi-Fi. So now let's talk about that. It's terrible. The built-in Wi-Fi has always been terrible. Even if this firmware update had solved my connection problems, I would still never use it. And let me tell you why. It's weak. It's in the 2.4 gigahertz band, which has a lot of traffic. I've used this uh, in live situations where other 2.4 networks have actually squashed mine so brutally that I can't connect. Now, I'm never without a backup situation or solution, so I hardwired and I was able to get on with my show. Um, but if this is you and you don't have backups, listen to my words of warning. Do not use these Behringer mixers with the built-in Wi-Fi router. Get an external router. It can be a cheap external router, it doesn't matter. But don't rely on the built-in hardware to do your network connections. You're going to want to use an external router and hardwire that to your actual mixer. Keep it high if you're in a live venue so that it's above everybody. If you can, if you can't, I understand you just got to make do. Once you have an external Wi-Fi router hooked up, you can connect to that router with your iPad or your Android tablet or whatever it is you're using and you should have a solid connection. We're going to test that right now. So I've got this on my home network and I'm going to switch it back over to the uh, hardwired mode and we'll see it reconnect. Here we go, it's reconnecting. And now I'm going to use my iPad to connect. Oops, let's turn screen recording back on. Start recording. Okay, so let's just make sure we're on the right network. We are, and now I'm going to open the Xair app. There it is, and I've got a solid connection using my external Wi-Fi router. You can see I'm changing it on the iPad. You can see it's changing on, uh, 
on my desktop software. Now things are a little slow. Um, not every channel has populated its name. This is probably just another bug. We'll see if those names pop up in the course of us doing this. Um, but at least I have my functionality back. Can I mute and unmute? Yes, I can. Can I get into my buses? Yes. Can I get into my effects? Yes. Sends. Now here's something you should note as well. In the sends page, you'll see, uh, if you click on the advanced tab, you will have your in pre EQ, post EQ, pre. This is where you select um, where the send takes from. So does it take it right after the input? Does it take the signal before the EQ, after the EQ, um, pre or post? Now there's actually stuff missing here. There's a scaling issue, which is being worked on by Behringer because the, uh, the buttons that are, are missing are actually scaled out of view. You can't see them, you can't get to them. So that's worth noting. This is another thing where it could hinder you if you're doing a lot of mixing or a very heavy show and you need to change your pre and your post on your aux sends. Really inconvenient. If you have a computer connected, you don't have that issue because you can use the, the desktop software, which doesn't have, to my knowledge, any real bugs. And that's both Mac and PC. I haven't had any issues with either of those up to this point. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you this, that when you use an external router, you do not get that disconnect situation. Um, so it's, it's really worth doing it this way and never relying on the built-in hardware. So there's scaling issues. The firmware does not necessarily fix the connection issues. Um, and there's probably a host of other bugs that I haven't personally come across. So... If you've experienced bugs that we didn't talk about today, or if you've done the firmware update and it did or didn't work from you, I would love to know about it. Please put it in the comments. And besides putting it in my comments, there is a board now on the Behringer website that is specifically for reporting information and bugs about the updated version of this software. So I will have that link for you. And I strongly suggest that any bugs you're experiencing, you go there right away and report and report and report. The more they hear about it, hopefully the more it'll push them to get these fixed in a timely fashion. Now there's supposed to be another update coming this week, which would be the week of August 14th. I don't know what day it's supposed to drop and I don't know if we'll actually see it this week, but according to the Behringer forum, that's what is planned. And for those of you wondering, um, because there's some rumors out there that they are not going to address the bugs in this version of the older app. That's not true. They are. They are going to get this software back to functional. The thing they are not doing is adding new features or upgrading it in any way. They are reserving those things for the new MX Mix app, but they have promised to get the old X Air app up to working condition. I hope they do, and I hope they do it quickly. It's been so long. It has been most of a year. They need to get on this. So please report, report, report on their forum and let's kick them into high gear. So that's it. I hope this was interesting or educational or helpful. And if it was any of those things, please like and share and subscribe the normal stuff. Check out the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Or because we've now hit 500 subs, we are going to have some channel memberships popping up. And you can use that way to help support the channel too. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who already subscribed. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, do so and tell your friends if they're into this kind of technology help to subscribe as well. As soon as we hit a thousand subs, I'm going to be doing uh, three software giveaways to random subscribers. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure it's public so I can see it or have another way to show me that you are subscribed to the channel. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. See ya.